You know, in Buchenwald was a concentration camp, and I got to see that. And it's hard to believe what went on there. They were some of the, the people that they had still in there, you know, really. And they was just practically starved to death. Now, actually, they did. And they, where they slept of the night, it was just, they had, <clears throat> like here, uh, and then just old boards was where they laid. Then they went up about like this, and they had another one, and then another one up here, if it was strong enough to get up there. And if they had any heat in there, I don't know. But you know, it got terribly cold over there. A lot of the boys froze their hands and their feet. And they had them places where they burned them. But anyway, down in the basement there, over when they went down the basement, they had three of them places where they burned them. And they could, on the left hand side when you went down in there was hooks up on the wall. And this is hard to believe, of course, but it's true. That some of them that I don't know certain ones they take down there and hang on that wall and just let them hang there. It, this tortures to what yeah. it was to them, torture them and, and then they Probably about so long, then they just take them and stick them. They had them doors where they could stick them in. I call them ovens and just put them in there and burn them. They burned a lot of them people. They buried a lot of them. They just take a dozer and push out a big deep trench and just take them, pile them in there and put the dirt on They had a lot of those camps over there like that, you know. Uh, Buchenwald was one of the old, old ones. And they said, you know, this, the main one that the, the old saying is, uh, was the main man there. And he had a, I think it was his wife maybe, if it wasn't his girlfriend. But they said that she had some of them, this is kind of wild, but it's true, I'm sure. Some of them people that had a lot of tattoos on them take them, you know, had lampshades made of them. Them people, that they'd go around in the morning and pick up the dead that died in, in them, you know, and there would always be a bunch of them that died every night. They'd just practically starve, starve to death a lot of them. And also they had over there where they took them and put them in a building and gassed them and killed them that way too. And the Jews, they were, they believed that they just wanted to do away with all the Jews, and they were the ones that they first got to taking in, you know, the Jews. <laughs> it's uh, hard to believe. They started out, they just kept getting more and more of those Jews, and eventually just about taking them all out of that country. And if we hadn't went over there, I'd say things wouldn't turn out like they did. Now, I do believe that, too, you know. Now, and that was a, a city over there. And they made uh, lots of uh, textiles and the like in there. But anyway, we were right in that town there was where we had when the war ended. After it ended, then of course it took a while to gather up all them prisoners, you know, that they had. <clears throat> they, them German prisoners, you know, they had gobs of them that they surrendered, you know. That was part of it. <coughs> Run them down. We're going to take you boys back home. We're going to take you through the states and give you 30 days, and then you're going to go over into the Pacific. That, didn't, that wasn't a feeling at all. And the good part of that is, while I was at home, 
they dropped them two bombs on them Japanese people. And you know they surrendered. <laughs> and that was a good deal. Well, we, when we got that 30 day furlough, they had a place for us to <clears throat> come back to. You know, I had my, uh, my blankets, and my helmet, and my, all my. A lot of things, you know, I had. I brought them home with me. And I still got my helmet hanging out there. <laughs>